we welcome and look forward to a special evening with Mechanical Horse Trough. Thank you very much indeed. I must just say that the last time we were here, um, we actually did have quite a few complaints. So we're, you know, a lot of people said we were rude and disgusting and <laughs> filthy and that. And, well, we were very hurt about this, actually. I'd, I'd like to reassure anyone that's worried about it that tonight is going to be absolutely no bloody different. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's children's hour. <laughs> Yes, seriously, Mechanical Horse Trough Children's Hour for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and we'd like to introduce our children's presenter for the show tonight. Now, I know you're going to love him because every child in the world really does love this young man going to come on now for you. Here he comes. Would you please like to welcome tonight? <laughs> Would you please like to welcome tonight your children's presenter for the Mechanical Horse Trough Children's Show? Let's have a big round of applause for Uncle Nadger! <laughs> It's a jolly old Uncle Nadger here. <laughs> and boy, <laughs> boy, have I got some great news for you. Noddy's here. <laughs> but he's still asleep. <laughs> he's in bed with a Cabbage Patch doll. <laughs> naughty Noddy, it's not even a girl doll. <laughs> I'm sure if we all shout loud enough. We can wake up, Noddy. Let's all shout, come on, Noddy. After three. One, two, three. Come on, Noddy! <laughs> We're going to have to shout louder than that to wake the lazy little bastard. Oi. Noddy, Noddy. Once more, after three. One, two, three. Come on, Noddy! Hello, boys and girls! I'm going to do you a little song now, boys and girls, all the way from Toy Town. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise Cos all the bears that you see there are gonna be circumcised <laughs> Yes, every bear that ever there was is gathered there for certain Because today's the day the teddy bears have their bricks licked <laughs> And now, I've got a little bit of gossip all the way from Dingley Dell. <laughs> Gas man, coal man, water board, and man what mends the telly. They're all the same to Big Ear's wife, the famous Knocky Nelly. She handles all the creditors, for years they've had no bills. She just takes them all upstairs and lets them have their fill. <laughs> Last week when Big Ears is out at work, she's upstairs with a bloke. It's PC Plod the policeman, and he's Nelly's latest poke. <laughs> she's got his vest and trousers off, she's asking him for more. Just then she hears old Big Ears come walking in the door. <laughs> well, she bungs the policeman in the wardrobe, and then she cries, oh crumbs, for hanging out the wardrobe door and Plod the policeman's plums. <laughs> Just then old Big Ears comes upstairs and says, Well, hello, dear. Boss has given me the day off work. And what's these dangling here? <laughs> well, Nelly's had time to think, and a very good tale she tells. I've just come back from shopping, Big Ears, and I bought these couple of bells. But they're not of the ringing kind. In fact, they're just a joke. So Big Ears lifts a finger up, and he gives the bells a poke. <laughs> Well, he pokes them once and he pokes them twice and he agrees the bells are dead. And poor old Blood the policeman has turned a funny shade of red. 
The old thing is, where's the bells will ring if he clouts them with his hammer? And Nelly sits upon the bed and can hardly raise a stammer. Well, he clouts them once and he clouts them twice, but still the bells don't ring. So he lifts up his hammer just to take one final swing. He swore to make those bells go ding, boy, George, he wasn't wrong. For I'll plod the policeman cries, for Christ's sake, ding bloody dog! <laughs> Thank you, music lovers. Someone came up to me at the bar who has obviously never seen us before just now and said, excuse me, lads, but do you do any of his Presley songs? No, I'm sorry, we don't. Bugger him, he never sung any of ours. Why should we sing any of his? No, uh, nothing wrong with Elvis. I mean, let's be fair, he was the king, wasn't he? What was it before Elvis? There were... Thank you very much, great. No, I'm glad there's an Elvis fan here. There's always a Wally or two around, you know, isn't there? But he did start it off doing, what was there? Rock and roll hadn't been invented, pop music, disco, it's all in the future till Elvis came along in the 50s, all those great hits. So we'd like to do a tribute to Elvis for you now. Except that looking around the club tonight, there's very few Elvis fans in here. And we do like to please everybody. So this is an Elvis tribute for all the hundreds and hundreds of punk rock fans in tonight. Hey! <laughs> I knew there would be. Because what we're going to do is we're going to let Watney introduce this. Because Watney used to be in a punk rock group. He did. Cyril Squirrel and his swinging nuts, he was called. <laughs> Come on, I want to give him a very big welcome when he comes on because, I mean, you feel sorry for him, as I've already said. He's very unlucky. He's so unlucky. He really is. If he was in a marching band, he'd be the prat on the piano. I'll tell you, he's that unlucky. <laughs> Here he comes. Hey, gentlemen, would you like to welcome onto the stage tonight a young man who's going to introduce our Elvis tribute for you. Let's hear it for the one and only evil, horrible, obnoxious Watney, alias What the Snot! <laughs> Evening, assholes. <laughs> okay, two we're gonna do. Gonna start off with a little punk rock number. It's a little number called uh, "I Thought My Nose Was Running, But It's Not." <laughs> <laughs> then we're gonna do a little fishing song. Little fishing song from Great Yarmouth. It's a little number called uh, "Don't Get Cooking the Fish Tonight, Mother." I'm coming home with the crabs. <laughs> and then, uh, here he is. Look, I'll just introduce him to you. This is Bob Blackhead. He comes from Acme. <laughs> so there I was, right, last night, picked up a bit of crumpet, took her up to me room, I got a Sex Pistols LP, put it on the old record player, turned it up really loud, got her on the couch, there I was, giving it half a pound of frobbing gristle, right? <laughs> so... You can't say that. They know what I mean, Stop they're the point. <laughs> Rephrase it, say it different. All right, bit of crumpet, took her up to my room, Sex Pistols LP, playing away in the background, got on the couch, there I was, playing hide the sausage, right? <laughs> <laughs> suddenly, suddenly she looks me in the eye. Here she said, is that Johnny Rotten? Shouldn't be, I said, I only used it twice, it's just... <laughs> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the star of our show tonight. <laughs> All the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee. Bless you. <laughs> Here he is, the king of rock and roll, Mr. Elvis Presley. <laughs> Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. You've heard of Elvis the Pelvis. This is his brother, Enos. Thank you, okay. This boy, this boy went to the VD clinic this morning. Hey? He got 96 on a clap on me. He was oh, oh, God, I never, I never, oh, I never. Well, I got more than that. <laughs> Thank you, okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'd, I'd like to tell you all a wonderful little story. Yeah. A wonderful little sad, sad story. Cause you know, way back home, I live out on the prairie. In a little log cabin, and I'm so happy in that little log cabin, don't you know? But not half a mile down the road, 
there's a family with 24 kids. 24 kids all living in a little tiny shed. A little shed down by the side of the railroad. 24 kids live there and I said to their ma, with 24 kids, your husband should have a knighthood. She said he's got one, he just keeps forgetting to wear it every now and again. <laughs> 24 kids live there. One day, their ma and pa got killed in a country and western song. And them poor little kids was left to be brought up by their eldest sister. And she was only five. And they used to get so hungry, every Friday night, I'd take them down an instant pot noodle between them. Them poor little kids were so grateful for that food. And then one day, when I set off to go prospecting up into the mountains for gold, I promised them kids I'd bring them back a great big barrel of gold. And when I left to go looking for that gold, there was 24 hopeful little hearts behind me. But when I returned, there was no sign of that little shed down by the railroad. <laughs> the poor little kids, they was nowhere to be seen. And a lump came into my throat. And there were tears in my eyes as I walked home. And there they were, squatting in my shack, the bastards. <laughs> Okay, here's a little sentimental song for all the ladies here tonight. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? Are you sorry I'm not your sweetheart? Do your bosom still sway in the opposite way? First together, then six feet apart. Do your varicose veins still come out at night? Does your breath reek of garlic and sometimes ignite? As I tried to explain, you broke wind again. It's no wonder you're lonesome tonight. We'd like to sing you a little Mexican song now, and it has got a chorus. I'd like you to join in with it because it's ever so simple. You don't even have to speak words. All you have to do is la la la, and it goes something like this. La 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 la. Okay, that wasn't very good, was it? We don't mind quiet audiences, it's only when they start creeping towards us we get worried, so we'll do it again. Everybody is tight. Come on and sing along. La 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 was a young man from Madras and his coolies was made out of brass as they banged together they played stormy weather and lightning shot out his la 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 everybody Mexican gaucho named Bruno has said there is one thing I do know a woman is fine a horse is divine but a sheep is numero uno <laughs> Gaucho whose ghoulies were hollow <laughs> He lived in a town called Caracas So he filled them with grit Then he shook them a bit Now he got maracas for knackers La 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 Sing me something La 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 A gringo 
Hey Gringo, hey Gringo. <laughs> what you say, what you say, what you say. <laughs> <laughs> What is the difference be <laughs> between Brit Eklund and the old Kent Road? Hey, I don't know. What's the difference between Brit Eklund and the old Kent Road? Not everyone's been up the old Kent Road. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the flying horse drops. I met you at the disco. You were standing at the bar. You had fried egg on your chin. Chewing gum in your hair. Sweat patches under your arms. But I didn't care about any of those things. As we were dancing, I held you tight. I smelled something not quite right. And first I thought that the smell was you. And then I thought that the smell was you. At first I thought that the smell was you. And then I saw it on your shoe. I won't dance, baby, I won't dance with you. Cause you got dark shit on your shoe. It's on your heels, it's on your heels, on your soul. I did the crack, and in the hole. Scrape it up. And look it out, get out. And we're the matchstick, but better watch out. That you don't get it on your fingers. Dog shit leaves a taste that lingers. I won't dance, baby. I won't dance with you. Cause you got dog shit on your shit. Ba dum ba dum ba dum ba 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 I won't dance with you Cause you've got dark shit on your shoe ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. No, I won't dance, baby I won't dance with you Cause you've got dark shit on your shoe Ooh, Dancing with dark crap on your shoe Ooh, Dark shit on your shoe Thank you very much indeed. That's the end of side one. As the actress said to the bishop, turn me over and try the other side. Gentlemen, please, hands together and welcome back for side two. We welcome back Mechanical Horstroth. Thank you. Glad you stayed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, serious side of the act now. I've always been a great lover of Irish folk music. I'm going to sing you a couple of my favourite Irish folk songs now. Watney's very kindly taught me the words, so I hope you really enjoy these, because sincerely, folks, these are two beautiful songs. That your name 
was much because your legs spread easily. Are you sure these are the right words? Hey? Are you sure these words are right? I bought my love a beautiful gold watch And now she's gone and swallowed it today And now my love is taking Epsom salts To try and pass the time away Looks so right to me Patrick McGinty, an Irishman of note, was hard up for sex, so he bought himself a goat. But it wouldn't pull the cart, so he kicked it in the scrot, and that was the end of Pat McGinty's note. Something that uh, a lot of you don't, out there don't know, because we've actually we're announcing this for the first time tonight, is that we've been very fortunate to have just landed our first television show on Channel 4 Television. Okay. We're really chuffed about this, as you can imagine, because, like, well, we've never been able to get on telly in the past, because we've always been a bit rude and that, you know, but don't, can't understand why. But it's great now they've got Channel 4, if any old crap on there, it's absolutely <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Channel 4, I, I believe you me, you would not, honestly, you would not believe what the people that work for Channel 4 television are like. Although, actually, if you've seen some of the programmes, you probably do realise what they're like. They're, it's incredible. They're really weird. I mean, did you see that? Just be, after they came on the air last year, they had that New Year's Eve gay party. Did you see that? It was in all the papers. New Year's Eve, year before last, Channel 4 opened up. The two hours of all these homosexuals prancing around in this nightclub in London. It's true. So, I'll tell you, Channel 4 is full of TV producers bending over backwards to please homosexuals. It's incredible. And it's all down to advertising, because what you'll get in the end is all these programmes for all these homosexuals and adverts in the middle of things like join your local gay rights society and widen the circle of your friends. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Well, anyway, they said to us, come on, do a show for us, Dad. So we thought, all right. But they said, we want you to introduce some sort of local talent from uh, around the country to sort of help you along. So we said, all right. And we went out talent spotting. And we have found an incredible duo. <laughs> <laughs> Believe you me, this is fantastic. We watched them. Actually, we saw them on a talent show. They weren't as good as the bloke that won it. His speciality was doing the splits over a live lobster. <laughs> Great he was. The audience went bloody wild, they did. Especially when it got him, it was... <laughs> Anyway, he can't be here because he's gone on the better things. He's travelling around the world doing impressions of Lena Zavaroni nowadays. So. But this duo is something very, very special. I want you to welcome to the stage tonight a young duo who are bound for stardom. I promise you they're going to be very, very big. Would you please welcome that fabulous duo, the Gruesome Tucson! <laughs> I've got a little schoolboy rhyme for you. Schoolboy rhyme. Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old man a French letter. When she got there, the cupboard was bare, so they tried it without. It were bare. <laughs> Who's always been naughty in bed? Who blows off under our bedspread? <laughs> Over my head, oh, my brother. <laughs> my brother said it was not he who put X lax in Granddad's tea. My brother said it was me. My brother's rotten, so's Granddad's guts. <laughs> Who got caught with the girl next door? Who got spanked till his bum was sore? But who found out what his willies for? <laughs> My brother! <laughs> who 
went to school and got a clout for wearing a safety pin through his snout to stop his bogeys falling out. <laughs> More than <rubbing> did. <laughs> Guitar solo. <laughs> <laughs> another rhyme, another school rhyme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Last one. <laughs> oh, Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor doggy a bone. When she bent over, up stepped old Rover and gave her a bone of his own. <laughs> <laughs> Who spied on the girls in the nudist camp? Watched them get brown with a sun ray lamp. Who came home because he thought he had cramp? <laughs> My brother! <laughs> Our sister got a dress what split in half And when she walks you can see her calf She's got another what split up the front No! Can't see her, can't see her! You don't wear Latin very often. <laughs> <laughs> the maid got pregnant and had to leave. How in hap she can't conceive. But, but who put holes in Dad's packet of freeze? <laughs> <laughs> we we like to carry on with something we don't very often do. Um, this is a religious song. <laughs> so on the basic principle, you'd probably upset every other bugger. We might as well upset the religious ones amongst you as well. <laughs> we don't very often do this. We only do this when we're faced with nice, quiet, polite, sober audiences. Well, I must say, it's nice to see there aren't any drunks in tonight. This, no, it's very embarrassing playing the drunks. I don't like to see too much drinking. It's very bad for you. It really is. No, all right for you lot down there. Yeah, take my advice. Don't drink too much. I can tell you from personal experience. It's a fact. It's only three years ago to the day almost that, that my wife died as a direct result of alcoholism. <laughs> I stabbed her when I was pissed. <laughs> This, this is a little religious song with a chorus, so I'd like you to join in with the chorus because you all do know it, it's ever so simple, and it goes something like this. Passes amongst you, would you please, by your war cries now. And while she's doing so, we have a few words of wisdom from Sister Maria, who's come along from the local convent to address you tonight. Thank you. God bless you, brethren. Okay, girls, just remember, all candles out by 12 o'clock. And just remember, I want no smoking after hours. Use Vaseline. <laughs> now look, a lot of you looking at me, right, thinking, what's he doing here dressed as a nun, right? I've got to admit, look, I ain't always been a nun. I used to be a sex maniac. Did? I took the exams and everything. I failed on the oral, but it's like... <laughs> Sorry about that, a bit tasteless, that one. <laughs> I thought, I don't know, I thought, not much cop at this. I'll be a gynecologist. Oh, I thought there must be an opening somewhere, like, not me. 
Now look, a lot of you looking at me, thinking life in the Abbey is a real drag, right? I'll just tell you something. A couple of weeks ago, we had the head rabbi, the head rabbi, came to our Abbey. We got a big red carpet, put it all down the steps, all down the drive. Bastard came by helicopter, landed on the roof. Right? <laughs> Good bloke though, he came into early morning mass, half past six in the morning, came into early morning mass. He came in and sat next to me and Sister Cystitis. It was me, Sister Cystitis and the rabbi. I'll just tell you about Sister Cystitis. She was an Irish nymphomaniac, I ain't kidding you. She could trip a bloke up and get under him before he hit the deck. <laughs> She was the original Irish women's liver. She threw away her bra and burnt her tits. It was like... <laughs> this will tell you how thick she was, right? She thought pubic hair was a friend of Br'er Rabbit's. <laughs> Soon put her right. <laughs> One of the girls loaned her a vibrator. She used it for a couple of days and all her fillings dropped out. It was... The sisters of Stytus, I'll tell you now, she used to suffer from anorexia nervosa. Every day for two months, all she ate was a pound of sugar. Every day for two months. She came into mass one morning, farted and filled the first two pews with candy floss. It was like... <laughs> anyway, I digress. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> so there we was, right? Up past six in the morning, all giving it some, right? Freeze a jolly good fellow. Oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> so there we are, right? Up by six in the morning, all giving it some. Suddenly, the rabbi leans over to Sister Cystitis and he says, Here, darling, if you can guess what I've got in my hand, you can have it. She says, If you can get it all in one hand, son, you can keep it. <laughs> Didn't stop there, right? Half hour later, she taps me. Oi, she says. Copper, look at the rabbi. He's uh, having a Barclays bank. <laughs> I says, look, for Christ's sake. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, 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 I didn't see that at all. <laughs> I says, look, just ignore him. Just ignore him. She says, I can't. I can't. He's using my hand. <laughs> I said to her after, didn't you mind? She says, no, I thought I had to work a week in hand anyway. Ah! <laughs> okay, brethren, I'd like to leave you with this thought. I'd like to leave you with this thought. A man who breaks wind in church must sit in own pew. <laughs> no, no, only joking, brethren. <laughs> sit where you like. <laughs> no, seriously, brethren, I'd like to leave you with this thought. Get the Abbey habit. Poker, no, no, you <laughs>